Enterprise Reinvention is a set of comprehensive strategies that position government to keep up with the pace of change in the context of a world with extended crises and unexpected challenges. One critical strategy is reorienting operations toward data-driven decision-making. It's a funny thing. It sounds easy, but it isn't. Getting it right is really hard work. It takes three things, getting access to the data, having the ability to make meaning of the data you get, and finally, having the courage to act on what you learn. So let's take those from the top. Access to data is about getting enough reliable data to anchor your work. Now, a couple of decades ago, there was consistent pressure for government to get data, and in many cases they did, and now they're swimming in it. It's almost as if we got data for the sake of getting data, and now managing it has become a bewildering task. Also, the data in which we are swimming is suspect. It has errors and gaps, simply because the tools into which it needed to be entered were hard to use, so it's often conflicting and duplicated. Resolving this will require more modern tools that reduce human error in data entry and the discipline to focus on data that's actually needed to anchor future decision-making. Here, less is often more. Now, tending only to this definition of access, creating a data set to anchor future decision-making won't fully resolve the challenge. That's because the creating of these data sets will happen in silos. Each government agency in a particular jurisdiction will create their own data set and rely on it to get their work done. But the truth is, their data alone won't suffice. Managing government effectively will require sharing data across silos. While technically this is not a challenging task, there is a lot of resistance to data sharing, usually in deference to privacy. Solving major challenges in government will require that we redefine the limits of sharing so that data sets can provide a whole view of citizens, of communities, and of infrastructure. Now, this level of access frees you up for the next challenge, having the ability to make meaning of the data you get. Now, this presents both a technical and a cultural set of challenges. Technology includes analytic techniques and data visualization tools that unearth patterns, correlations, and trends. It positions you to unravel a hidden story within a huge bundle of data and to consider decisions from a robust place of facts. The importance of creating a culture of data-driven decision-making cannot be underestimated. Managing and interpreting data is everybody's job, not just the guy with the word analyst in his title. This means prioritizing data literacy across all levels of the organization and getting the workforce into the day-to-day -day practice of using data as part of the language they speak in getting their jobs done. Now, getting access to data and then deriving meaning from it are powerful tools for understanding solutions. The hardest part comes last, having the courage to act. Sometimes we'll learn things from data that we don't expect. Sometimes actions that will solve pressing problems will mean significant changes for people, which can often be hard. And some decisions may be unpopular, despite the fact that they leap off the page with statistical clarity. Taking action, making decisions from analyzed data, requires support from 360 degrees in government, from elected and appointed officials, from administrators who oversee programs, and from staff who provide direct services. We're more likely to get that support when there's confidence in the data we have access and transparency about the analysis that led to its conclusion. This is how these three things, access, meaning, and action, work as interlocking gears in organizations that use data to drive decision-making. Imagine this example. A mayoral administration is committed to new jobs and higher employment rates. Were they using data to drive decision-making, they might have a collection of data sets that include the location of new companies move into town, the location of working age adults who are under earning, and bus routes. They could use these data to develop an understanding of the patterns which of the new jobs include a wage that exceeds the eligibility level for public assistance? Which of the adults could receive the training that would qualify them for one of the new jobs? And which bus lines would need to be rerouted so these newly employed adults could get to work riding two or fewer buses? Decisions made based on these patterns would have a measurable impact on employers bringing their businesses to town, on improved employment rates among current residents, and on the overall economy. This is a great example of how a strategy that is core to total enterprise reinvention works. Reorienting operations toward data-driven decision-making is challenging work. The thing to know is that success in government is not about how many decisions you can make. 
It's about how many decisions you can make that stick. The ones that are driven by quality data and robust analysis, they will.